Okay, so this video is human development and diversity of IP geography, and then the syllabus point is the multi-dimensional multi process of human development and ways to measure it, and then the subtopics are UN SDGs, criteria, validity and reliability of development, indicators and indices, empowering women and indigenous or minority groups, and then detailed illustrative examples of affirmative action to close the development gap okay so the definition of human development is the process of enlarging people's opportunities freedoms and options that improve their well-being and now we're going to look at the SDGs so this is from the um UN development program's website so it says the sustainable development goals were born at the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development in Rio de Janeiro in 2012 the objective was to produce a set of universal goals to meet the urgent environmental, political and economic challenges facing our world. The SDGs replaced the Millennium Development Goals, which started a global effort in 2000 to tackle the indignity of poverty. The MDGs established measurable, universally agreed objectives for tackling extreme poverty and hunger, preventing deadly diseases and expanding um, primary education to all children, among other development priorities. The SDGs are a bold commitment to finish what we started and tackle some of the more pressing challenges facing the world today. All 17 goals interconnect, meaning success in one affects success for others. Dealing with the threat of climate change impacts how we manage our fragile natural resources, achieving gender equality or better health helps eradicate poverty, and fostering peace and inclusive societies will reduce inequalities and help an economies prosper. In short, this is the greatest chance we have to improve life for future generations. The SDGs coincided with another historic agreement reached in 2015 at the Paris Climate Conference uh, together with the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction signed in Japan in March 2015. These agreements provide a set of common standards to reduce carbon emissions, managing the risks of climate change and natural disasters, and build back better after a crisis so they're unique in that they cover issues that affect us all they reaffirm our international commitment to end poverty permanently everywhere they're ambitious in making sure no one's left behind more importantly they involve all of us to they involve us all to build a more sustainable safer and more prosperous planet for all humanity so basically the un the scgs are a way of having like a multi-dimensional development framework globally which targets political environmental and economic and social even um, issues and it replaced the Millennium Development Goals which were mainly surrounded around um, just eradicating poverty and hunger um, and now it's expanded into like this very um, multifaceted model so these are all of the 17 goals um, and something really important is the goal 17 which is partnership of the goals where like there's a, there's a very strong emphasis on the idea of these all kind of intertwining and help and like leading to the progression of other goals um yeah okay so now we're going to look at different development indicators and indices so the human human <laughs> human development index <laughs> measures wealth through income per capita slash purchasing power health through life expectancy at birth, educational attainment, so the average years of school of people aged 25 and up and expected years of schooling, gives a score from 0 to 1. Um, the highest measurements are in the UK and Australia and the lowest are in most sub-Saharan African countries. So, the, And then the gen gender inequality index is it measures gender inequalities in three important aspects of human development, reproductive health, so maternal mortality rate and birth rate, empowerment of women, through the proportion of parliamentary seats occupied by women with a percentage of women in secondary education and then economic status so labor market participation rate and labor force particip participation rate um, it indicates the percentage of potential hdi loss due to gender inequality so what are some issues that these indicators might have well this is just <laughs> this is just <laughs> The statistics can be inaccurate, poorly financed. Um, they might they might be manipulated. Um, there, some countries only rely on one crop. 
some people barter for goods and services or GNI slash GDP may be irrelevant. And there are also averages, so it can disguise inequalities, such as in capital cities, there tends to be like a higher standard of living than in rural areas. Um, but on like a um, index like this, it would it wouldn't really distinguish between those two. Okay, now we're going to look at empowering women and indigenous or minority groups. So women's empowerment. Women are the largest socially and financially disadvantaged group globally. They often work twice as many hours as men and earn only one-tenth the income that men do. They consume less food than the men and own only one-hundredth of prop the property that men do. And in developing countries, women tend to be excluded due to physical perceptions and denial from education. So what are some sex st steps being taken? So there's equal pay legislation in Canada and the US and that happened in the 50s and the 60s and the UN also created guidelines for International Women's Day in 1975 and there's also much other measures but that um, I just haven't mentioned here but these are kind of key ones that um, I found. And then minority empowerment. So a minority is any category of people who are differentiated from the social majority in a country or community. Um, LGBTQ plus people, like groups basically, experience harassment, physical violences, uh, lower pay employment, termination is also legal in some places, and Africa and the Middle East and some Middle Eastern countries have a death punishment towards LGP, LGBTQ plus community members. Um, also, my, minorities could be ethnic minorities. My, ethnic minorities, non-native speakers, religious groups, indigenous peoples, and the disabled. Now we're going to look at some examples of affirmative action to close the development gap. So affirmative action is basically like giving special consideration towards minority groups um, for like past injustices that have been imposed upon them, like kind of making up for those injustices. So first of all, we have volunteers and in initiative Nepal. So Nepal is one of the poorest and least developed countries in the world. Women are born into a patriarchal society, married early, they lack education, there's an issue of gender-based violence, they do not have an independent income, they're dependent on men, they lack, have a lack of rights to land. One in 24 women die during pregnancy um, or childbirth. Few women enter the skilled work, skilled work and leadership positions. There's also a lack of female teachers. And then, so now we have the Volunteers Initiative Nepal Organization, which is a non-profit charitable volunteer organization based in Nepal. It's founded in 2005 and it aims to empower marginalized communities through enhanced education, health, income generation, and basic infrastructure programs. So they have the Women's Empowerment Program, which um, targets Nepal um, specifically because 239 out of 10,000 women die from childbirth, 85% of women are in agriculture, almost half of the women are married before 18 years old. They provide education and training to women of all ages through mental health classes, sexual health classes, microcredit through cooperatives, and also entrepreneurship development. Okay, and then we have Rwanda, Rwanda's women empowerment. So following the um, Rwandan genocide, there kind of was a imbalance of um, of women to men, um, and so following that, there was kind of this phenomenon ph phenomenon where in twenty thirteen, parliamentary elections ushered in sixty four percent of seats for women candidates, making Rwanda the top country for women in politics. In two thousand three, the constitution set a thirty percent quota for women in elected positions which is barely a decade post-genocide. Nevertheless, many women leaders still find the comp their competency questioned and they kind of tend to have this negative reputation um, regarding their skills and um, their kind of, and um, their like abilities. Okay, so the solutions were that the UN Women um, Organization supported a series of training sessions of leadership and public speaking from April to May of 2018 in preparation for the 2018 elections and 10 training sessions were held for women candidates in five provinces of Rwanda. 61% of the final list candidates ended up being women so that was successful 
and this is run under a joint, joint program between UN Women, UN Development Program and UNFPA and there's also some funding by the Swedish International Development Agency. Finally, we have the Dani tribe. So they, these tribes are located in West Pop what the? In West Papua Baliam Valley in Irian Jaya. Um, so the background of this group is that they're described as Stone Age people. They're physically isolated. They're impacted by the arrival of the Dutch of science, religion, um, World War Two, tourism, mining, and modernization. So they've had a lot of different kind of influences over a long period of time have they still remained fairly traditional in their practices and cultures so what are some solutions to kind of providing affirmative action to this ethnic group so first of all we have education so there was there's been schools created by the church the local church to teach Literacy and numeracy allow children to seek employment for wages. However, 60% of income is still spent on traditional ceremonies, so there's still this like emphasis on cultural practices. Uh, there's also the provision of like electricity, so some huts have solar panels from the Indonesian government in 2015. There's also been the introduction of CDs and USBs. Mobile phones have become cheaper, so they have this access to media and internet. And there's also more access to transport, um, which such as vans and minibuses, rather than women walking 20 to 30 kilometers in their kind of daily labor activities. Um, and also culturally, there's been a diversification of dishes as rather than relying solely on like starch crops, um, there's more diversification of diet to maybe incorporate more protein and things like that as well.